Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and I have a marker problem. I have yet another set of markers to review for you today, but I've actually been asked about this set a lot, so, uh, or this brand of markers um, in general, and so I'm happy to be able to review it for you today. Um, and actually, the folks at Altenu reached out to me and asked if I wanted to review their alcohol-based markers. They asked me what set I'd be interested in. They come in, um, they do come in several different bundles, but I thought this set of 12 primaries would be, I would be able to get a good feel for the quality, there was enough colors that I could work on blending to see how that works, and get an overall feeling or impression of the line, um, and that way I would kind of know how they stack up against other marker brands that I've used. I love working with markers, um, I find it oddly satisfying, and I'm always looking for kind of the best quality for the best price. So we're going to take a look at these today. Um, they come in this cardboard box, and I think you're meant to... Um, I think you're actually meant to tear this off or bend it back or something so you have a little bit of a, um, like a, like a little easel stand here. I think that's, or maybe you're probably meant to do it so you can bend it back and set it down on your table so you can see your markers. Um, that's kind of cool. But I'm on an inclined table, but if I do set it flat on my table, let me just kind of scoot this over, that would work actually pretty well to see everything and keep your markers flat. Um, but if you don't want to do that, there's actually a hard case on the inside, so you could um, just set that on your table, or you could actually lay it on its side on your marker stand if you have like, like I've got, like the wall in front of me is all markers. I could just set that on, on top of the stack if I wanted to. The tower, the leaning tower of markers. Um, so I like that. That's durable. That would definitely be handy if I choose not to keep the box. The box has the swatches on it, and the colors that are in this collection are ruby red, and I've got them swatched a little bit here, bigger. Ruby red, cotton candy, autumn blaze, mango smoothie, uh, frayed leaf, forest glades, ocean waves, desert night, lavender fields, evening gray, mocha, and jet black. So the again, the swatches on their box are much darker than the way the markers are. Uh, I noticed it on the watercolors as well. You can see they're much darker. This is um, render paper I'm using here. So obviously different papers will give you a different level of, um, of color. Uh, I've colored here on Nina because basically I was tidying up and I had this sheet of things I'd stamped out in the past. And I think I stamped it out for my girls to color because they were coloring with markers with me one day and I was gonna chuck it, but then I'm like, oh, you know what? This will be great. I can test out these markers. Um, I won't be sad if I mess up blending or they don't work good. This is Nina cardstock. I know it's um, it's reliable. And uh, and it was done. It was done. And I was sitting here and I was didn't have anything else to do and uh, just colored. It was fun. I highly recommend that when you're when you're feeling kind of blah and you can't think of anything to do, start coloring. Um, so the markers themselves are a, a triangular barrel. They've got a matte black finish on the barrel themselves. You have the color name and the number. So um, the the names are going to coordinate with their ink pads. So it, that can help if you're matching colors. Uh, say you want to do no line coloring and you want to stamp in frayed leaf and then color with um, with different colors that would go with that and not see your lines when, when you're done. So it looks like um, like it's a freehand drawing. You can do that. So that's kind of handy. Uh, you have, oh, the neat thing about this I think stampers are going to be excited about is that you've got a brush tip on one end and you have got a bullet tip on the other. So let me zoom in and put just, I'm gonna flip this over. <laughs> Not that that really helps much because it's really, <laughs> really saturated, but I'm just gonna zoom in here. So we get a nice thick brush tip there and we've got a nice uh, hard point fine tip there. So I'll just kind of, there's the fine tip. There's a brush tip. Let me do that with black on, uh, on the other side. It seems that the caps can go on either end. The end with a band on it is your fine tip, not your brush tip, which is kind of opposite and might be a little weird getting used to if you're familiar with um, like Copics or most most markers will put their band or their identifier on the brush tip because that's the one that you're generally looking for. That's why you're paying the money for the brush tip markers. It's because you want that uh, that flexible tip. But let me just grab the black. <clears throat> And just show you, I was kind of just kind of doodling with that there actually. I can do it right here. Uh, so you can go right up on the tip and get a fine line. You can press down, get a thick. And it springs back pretty good. Now these nibs are pretty flexible. I was actually very impressed with the flexibility 
Um, they are the foam rubber type of nib versus the felt tip. These are not going to fray on you like, um, well, I'll show you here. I'll show you some, I'll show you the difference. So that's a foam rubber nib. Uh, the Illustrator by Spectrum Noir foam, or like that foamy rubber nib. So are Copic, so are Blick Studio, so are Art and Fly. There are some that are not and some hold up better than others. Uh, let's see. I know the Studio 71 is a fiber tip brush nib. And I mean, you can kind of see, I'm going to just do a, try to do a fine line. I'm not really able to get a fine line with this one anymore. I haven't used it that much, but it will give me a broad line. But to get that fine line, I really can't because it started to fray already. And this was just a random one I pulled off of my table. I'm not sure if you can see it. I don't want to like force it. I'm pretty gentle with markers. So the felt tip ones are cheaper, but they fray a lot quicker than you have to rely on like your, um, your chisel end for your fine tip. So this, you actually get a flexible brush nip that is not going to fray on you, at least in my experience with the foam rubber nib markers. What happens with those, how they wear out, is that often there's like a little, like a stiff piece of plastic inside the nib, and sometimes that will snap. It'll like kind of break or pop, and then like your nib just feels really floppy, like you can't get any control with it, like a wet noodle, like you're coloring with a wet noodle. So that's what kind of happens there. So I was really thrilled to see that this was a um, higher quality nib. I honestly... When craft companies come out with markers, I'm often very disappointed. Like the Stampin' Up! ones, they've got a fiber nib, and you can just feel they're, they're stiff. They're, um, they just kind of want to flop over at the end. You can tell they're going to fray. You don't get the control. It's almost like it's hard as a rock until you get to that end where it's kind of worn down a bit. That's how you get the flexibility. But that's not really, you know, what you want. Um, so I was really, and these are four bucks a pop, and these, like, in a, in the set that I got, um, which was given to me, I want to be clear, uh, that set retails for $44.99, which isn't cheap, but it works out to $3.75 a marker. There are refills. You can get three replacement nibs for $5.99. That is cheaper than Copic, and I do find, I would consider them to be the same quality as Copic, Blick Studio, or Art and Fly. Um, and they have refill bottles, and their refills are actually five milliliters bigger than Copic, and they are five ninety nine. And from what I hear in the pipeline, I think the retail on Copic refills is about ten dollars. Generally, you can find them on sale uh, for six something, but they are going to half the size of their refills. And I heard they're going to change the same; they're going to charge the same for them. So, um, so I'm not impressed with that about Copic, if that is true. But the um, the Altenew refills are five ninety nine for thirty milliliters, so I think that's pretty affordable. So you can get these in a variety of different sets. There are 60 colors total in the line from what I could dis discern from their swatches and the sets that I could find on their website. Um, they sell a colorless blender separately. It doesn't come with the sets, which is kind of nice because like I'm going to show you like this is I'm just going to grab a random handful of colorless blenders because I have like probably 14 of these suckers. They all, cause they all, all came with a set with these, uh, with these sets of a different brand. So I've got so many blenders just because they came with sets. And, um, you know, you can get overrun with blenders. So I like that that's separate. I think that's $5.99 as well. Um, other than that, they don't have open stock markers, but they do have markers in color families of four. So it would have your four greens, your four purples, your four reds. Those sell for $16, so you're paying $4 a marker. But I kind of like that because you could collect up a set and not have duplicates um, and go as your budget allows. So say you have like a $30 budget a month for craft supplies and you really want to build a marker set, you could do your greens this month, your pinks next month, your reds next month, you know, and you could work on that way until you've built up your set. Or I guess you could, if you had a, uh, you'd have to have a $32 budget and you could get two packs. But anyway, this primary set does have doubles in different sets that they offer. They also offer, um, like A, B, C, D, and E sets of 12 markers, and that would get you the whole, uh, the whole enchilada without any duplicates. Those, I think each of those sets are also around $45. I think it's the same, same price per marker. I find their, their website's jumping, jumps around on me when I'm, uh, <laughs> when I'm like trying to find stuff, but um, I think it's $45 for their 12 sets. And so if you did the A, B, C, D, and E, you'd get all 60. I think 12 times five is 60. Is that right? 12 times one, two, three, four, five. Gosh, I gotta use my calculator. I don't know, guys, I got Corona brain. Uh, 12 times five, 60. What do you know? <laughs> so that's how you, so you could get all 60 colors that way. That would probably be the cheapest way. Cause you'd be paying like 25 cents less per marker than getting them in the four packs. But, um, 
getting the four packs, a pack or two at a time, learning how to blend those colors, you know, that might be a better way to learn. Uh, so if you get the primary essential set, you are going to have duplicates. Six of these colors are in set A, two are in set B, two are in set C, one's in D, and one is in E. So I just wanted to mention that in case you're thinking, I want to run out and get that set because that, then I can tell if I like them and then I can collect the others. You will end up with doubles if you do it this way. So uh, you could get the set and see if alcohol markers are for you and then, you know, you could branch out. But I think if you're really interested in this, you might want to... Um, to get maybe set A and then build on from that so that way you won't end up with doubles as you go. So, But that said, the primary essential set is really versatile because I just had this random thing that I stamped out and I was saying, okay, what kind of colors can I get from these? Because something I really like about these colors is they're not knock you over the head vibrant. They have more subtle undertones. So um, I was thinking, you know, I bet I could use that red and that pink. I bet I could use that red and that yellow, that um, that orange rather, that orange, that yellow, those two blues, those two, you know, and, and, you know, you can mix and match. So I used that purple and that gray, and I did use just a blender that I had on hand, and I colored this. And I think that was a really effective blending and shading and coloring. With this one, I used the red, the orange, and the yellow, and I was able to color this magnolia here. I mean, it's not perfect. That is a pretty, those are pretty big jumps there. But uh, but it did pretty good. It got the job done. I mean, it's not as flawless as, as if I had like a full set of oranges and a full set of reds, but it got the job done, you know, and if you're like maybe you're traveling or, you know, you're going to a friend's house and you're or you're going to be on a plane and you're worried that you might lose a marker um, getting a in a, well, I don't want to say inexpensive. Forty five bucks is not cheap, but um I think it's I think it's a good value for what you're getting, but it's not like losing three hundred dollars worth of Copic markers, basically. Um, like this one here is those two blues with a blender to soften the edges. I think that blend looks fine. These two greens, that's a super simple blend. It worked out really well. I used the pink and the red here to do those petals. Pretty happy with the way that came out. Red's a hard color to blend, and that is a pretty intense red. But because you have the the brush tip, let me show you here. Um, the thing with a good brush tip is that you can vary your pressure and by varying your pressure, you put out a variety of ink amounts. So you can see how that's like puddly there. Like maybe if I hold it in the light and just kind of wiggle it around, see how that's wet. That's really saturated. I've got a lot more ink there than I have there. Just that flicking motion is going to give me a gradient that would be difficult to get with a chisel marker or a hard bullet tip marker. Um, and even with the lower quality brush markers, let's go grab that one that I just had. It's possible, but it's not as easy because there's not as much um, there's not as much play in the nib. So I can do that, but I find that it wants to like leave out as much ink at the beginning, and then like you can see this nib is already bent over because of that and starting to fray. So I typically don't do that with these markers. Um, I really baby these the the you know the um, the fiber markers. You're probably thinking, why do you even bother with those, Lindsay? Well, I'll tell you what, these are like under a buck, you know, uh, these are, you know, closer to four. These are worth a buck, you know, I'm not saying they're not worth a buck, but you know, you kind of get what you pay for. You are getting a better marker, uh, when you have a foam rubber nib. And, um, and I would say they are very equivalent in quality to the Art and Fly markers, the Blick Studio markers, Copic markers, and Blick, um, not Blick, shoot, and the uh, Spectrum Noir Illustrator markers. And uh, they're, except for the Copic, you know, the, those other markers run around um, $354 in sets. Oh, the Bianno, um brush markers are also very comparable there. They're cheaper. They're probably more like $2 a marker, but they only have one set. But it is a set of 70 But I would say those are all pretty comparable. However... Um, actually, all of these that I just showed you right here in my hands, not the Viannos because they don't have refills, but all these ones that I showed you in my hands, these all have refills available. So I really like that. If you have a marker you like, you've got a color combination you like, you can buy a refill. And it's like, it's like getting 10 markers for free, right? You buy this, then you buy a refill for the same cost as a marker, pretty much. And then you've got 10 markers. You know, that's, that's good math. That's art math. That's math I can do. And, um... Yeah, why not? Why you don't? The plastic's gonna last forever. The plastic's gonna last as long as you're doing markers. Replace a nib if you need to. I've had to replace one nib, one Copic nib in my entire life. Um, 
because the higher quality nibs last longer. So I think it's unlikely that you need to replace a nib. However, I'm going to see if like, cause those are cheaper than Copic. I might see if they would fit my Copics. I don't think so. I think they're a little bit fatter. I think they're about the size of the, uh, let's take a look. I think they're about the size of my art and fly markers though, but I'm going to check the Copic here. The Copic nibs, I would say are a teeny bit more slender, very, and the, I think the hole that the nib goes in is a little bit smaller. I'm trying to line them up. They might be close to, yeah. I think the Copic's a little hair smaller, and I know the inside, I bet the inside of the marker, I know that's a lot smaller than the Art and Fly one. Let's look at the Art and Fly one. Let's see. I think those are probably about the same size because, oh yeah, the uh, the part that they go into is about the same size too. So I bet those would, those are probably the same nibs. I like them. Um, yeah, I'm, I was, I was very impressed. I didn't know what I was going to be getting here with these and I was really thrilled that they're good. So the other thing with this primary set that I want to mention, because the colors are so nice and light, you can layer. So I was like, look at this mess, right? I was thinking, okay, I, what two colors haven't I used yet? I haven't used the brown and the black. So I tried to blend those. Black is just way too dark to blend. So then I took the brown and it's like, well, what if I use two opposites? So I used yellow and purple, that light lavender and that yellow, and I made my brown there and I used the brown, the actual brown marker to do my, um, to do the inside part. And then I did the bottom leaf with the brown. And I'm like, well, that's not dark enough. So I used these two colors to layer over that and shade it up and make it darker. So you can layer, markers are transparent, and you can keep layering up. The only thing you wanna watch for is that if you oversaturate the paper, then your marker can go outside of the lines. But if that happens, you take a clear blender marker and you just kind of color, um, like I got over the lines right here. Let's do that. Color over it with a firm nib. Use like a bullet or a chisel and you can push that back. Now the bullet and brush combination, those are available on the Spectrum Noir. They have a finer bullet nib. They're available on the Stampin' Up! ones. I don't recommend these. I think they're overpriced in the, the nibs will fray and they tend to dry out. I've had issues with these drying out and I hadn't used them very much. Um, so, and I think that's in the, you know what? I think the Prismacolor brush marker also has that combination of a, of a brush nib and a fine point nib. So those are the only three that I know of. And I don't even think I can lay, I think I only have one Prismacolor. Oh no, I got, yeah, here it is. Here it is. Am I right? Yes. You, so the Prismacolor brush nib marker give, has a good nib no refills. It's a disposable marker. Uh, it, it's got the bullet nib and the brush like the L2 new markers we're looking at today, but they're open stock. They're about four. No, actually, no, I think they're more like five or six bucks. No refills on that. Um, not a bad marker, just not refillable. Um, the Spectrum Noir has a good brush and a hard nib, refillable, replaceable nibs. We can look at these kind of side by side and see how the just so you can see, because the bullets, actually, gosh, those bullets look about the same. Let me get a darker color so we can really compare what they look like. Um, Cause I was thinking that the, the Spectrum Noir does have a pretty small bullet nib. I want to get a darker color though, so it will show up a little bit better. Let's try this. So this is the Spectrum Noir Illustrator, fine tip. And this is the, let's do a red one. So it's a little bit closer. This is the, yeah, they're the same size. They're the same size, very comparable. I think they would probably be the most comparable marker because also I think that the the flex on the nib is very similar too. Because the Spectrum Noir Illustrator has a very flexible nib. And these are the new Illustrator markers that I'm comparing it to. They had crappy felt nibs when they started with the Illustrator. Yeah, I'd say they're very similar in flex. Um, I think these might be a little bit more flexy. The illustrators, I think, might be a smidgen more soft. Let me do that. Let me just. Gosh, I feel like I'm doing a blind taste test here. Let me try. Let me try a different color. That one felt. The other one felt a little, little dry. Uh, yeah, illustrator is a little bit softer. I like the spring on the Altenew a little bit better. Okay. It's fun to put them side by side because like you might have used something once and been like, yeah, they're the same. But when you pick them up and use them side by side, have them in your hands, um, you know, you'll be able to tell exactly the difference. Uh, here on this fox, I used yellow, orange, and brown and the warm gray to get those tones. 
Uh, here I used both of those blues and the lavender to do that little leaf demo. Uh, I found they layered really well and they blended really well. I definitely would recommend these. Um, I think that you know, what sort of sets you go for is up to you. There are money-saving refill options. Now, keep in mind, it takes a while to use up a marker to the point where you need to refill it. So, I don't know if I'd recommend running out and buying all the markers and all the refills. They do have some bundles, so I mean, if it was in your budget, you could figure out per marker, per refill, like what it's going to set you back. It might be a huge, awesome deal, and you want to do that. Um, you can use those alcohol inks for other alcohol ink projects. You could even, like, mix inks and refill other markers. I do that all the time. <laughs> if I if a non-refillable marker runs out of ink, I'll just, you know, I'll mix up some alcohol inks and I'll refill it myself if it's one that I really like and I can't get a refill for it. So, if you just want to see if you like markers, you want to try out a nice basic arrangement, this, the primary essential set, I mean, look at all these blends, that really, that's pretty versatile for 12 markers, I think, because they have so many lovely pastel shades in here. I kind of wish there wasn't a black, I kind of wish they had, like, a tan instead of a black, that would have been really awesome, like, maybe if they had, like, paper bag instead of, instead of black, so you get that mocha there, I think that would be really nice, or, like, an apricot, um, like, a peachy, uh, a peachy, sandy color would be really nice but that's my only complaint about this is like nix the black and give me a give me a uh, like a like a, a peachy tan color that would be great that i could mix with the brown and um and whatnot but hey if that's the only complaint i have for the set of markers that's not bad because i can be kind of picky when it comes you know when when you're looking at a marker that costs more than a dollar i can be a little picky uh but all in all i think these are nice i think they're priced very well i don't think they're um, they're asking too much for these markers. Your best, your most economical way to go would be to buy probably the uh, set A, B, C, D, and E. I know they have bundles, so that can knock your per marker price down a bit, but that's a lot to shell out at once, so if you, you know, wanted to shell out 45 bucks and get a set of 12 and do that each time, if you really are committed to this line of colors, that would work. I kind of like how they have that those sets of four though, how you have like four greens and four purples, so you have those blending colors that like, I think that's nice because if you already had like a stash of maybe another brand of marker and you're kind of not, you know, you're not ready to replace everything, it's a little out of your budget, you could say, well, I'm kind of low on greens or I'm kind of low on pinks, maybe those are what you use up and you've used up those markers and they don't have refills and you're like, okay, I'll try that to replenish what I have and then you could slowly build it up over time. I think that's a good way to go. Um, I do recommend these. You know, even if, if you want a travel set, you just want to get this set of 12 to, you know, have in your bag and be able to do a variety of colors like this. I think that's great. I think they really thought about their selection here. Except for the black. I'm sure there are people that like black. Sometimes I do a black background. I'll show you one something I drew where I did a black background that I think turned out pretty well. This is my, this is my render sketchbook. I like this sketchbook because it doesn't bleed. Like, I colored on that side, and, like, I colored on this side. There's, like, no bleed through. Um, I really, really like that about this. But it doesn't blend very well. I love these creepy hands. I did a month of just drawing hands for Inktober last year, and it was so fun. Okay, so this is a black background, and, um... I think I probably use a chisel end of my Art and Fly markers, but that's kind of fun because you can really make things pop by doing a black background. That might be something to try. Maybe that's why it's in there. I still would have preferred a sandy, a sandy uh, like beige color, but seriously, that's my only gripe, and it's really not even a gripe because some people would prefer to have a black, I'm sure. Uh, so there you have it, the Altenew set of 12 markers. I probably should have used Altenew stamps to color these in with, but um, as you know, I'm pretty lazy, and I already had this stamped out. Plus, I like that there's a lot of different subject matter to blend animals, stumps, different things like that. Uh, and... I had a good time with it. I didn't have any issues here. I did yellow, brown, and orange, the center of that flower. Stuff just blended really well. The nibs were really responsive, and I was pleasantly surprised, especially after the last set of watercolors that I reviewed from them, which was, I think it's probably the only product I've tried from them that's been a bummer. These are not. These are fantastic. I highly recommend them. I will put links down below so you can see what they offer. They have a lot of different combinations. Just make sure if you're looking at different sets that you're going to get something, you're not ordering something with doubles. If you order the primary essential sets, almost guaranteed you're going to get doubles with, um, with other sets because they kind of, I think they kind of cherry picked the most versatile colors that would kind of get you the furthest if you're new and you want to try it and you're not sure if you want to um, commit to markers or not because it can be kind of an expensive endeavor or in my case addiction apparently if you see the hundreds of markers that i have it's kind of embarrassing but boy i do love them and it's got to be cheaper than smoking that's all i can say <laughs> 
thank you so much for watching today. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy reviews. Until next time, happy crafting!